I am Marianne Bonilla. I am a pediatric hematologist oncologist currently at St. Joseph's Children's Hospital in Patterson, New Jersey, and I'm a clinical assistant professor at Columbia University in New York. I am also have been an advisory member of the Severe Chronic Neutropenia Registry. I have been involved with severe chronic neutropenia since my fellowship years, and it's been my particular interest throughout my career. I will be discussing today a story of GCSF and how it went from the lab to the clinical trials. It is a story that mirrors many different drugs and many uh, therapeutic techniques. I was blessed to have been present when GCSF was purified and then produced in a recombinant method, and we use this medication in preclinical studies um, in primates. We then encountered two patients who had a very rare severe congenital neutropenia disorder and we studied their bone marrow in cultures and for the first time was able to see the effect of GCSF in producing granulocytes. We then performed a compassionate study for these two patients and were able to successfully raise their neutrophil count and improve their quality of life. This, in conjunction with other collaborators, led to the multicenter study that then led to the FDA approval of GCSF for the treatment of severe chronic neutropenia. My approach to the patient actually has been not to change lifestyle, but to try to maintain a normal a lifestyle as possible. I think that basic hygiene techniques is very key to reducing the bacterial burden uh, in the body and therefore reducing the risk of infection. And today, we have a myriad of products with antibacterial um, uh, powers uh, for personal use and for household cleaning. And in addition, they're environmentally friendly. Um, adapting this is very, and, and good food preparation is important. In terms of vitamins, um, there is, is much interest today in vitamin D, not only for its effect on osteoporosis and bone changes, which is what we are seeing in some patients who have been on chronic neutrogen, but also because it may be effective in other disorders and in actually in prevention of cancer. <clears throat> um, so I believe that adequate vitamin D, calcium intake, and exercise is important. These are good recommendations for everyone today. And um, I think that if we treat a patient successfully, they should be able to continue in their school and work attendance and normal socialization. The other symptom control that many patients um, suffer from are, has been bone discomfort from the neupogen. And there are alternative therapies or integrative therapies such as massage, acupressure, acupuncture that may help the side effect. And there are other agents, again, being looked at to help the fatigue and um, that these patients may feel. Again, I think regular dental care with brushing and flossing is important, regular checkups and dental cleanings. And for those patients who have severe periodontal disease, they may require more frequent cleanings than is usually recommended. In severe cases, they may need to consult a periodontal specialist. There are some agents, um, one of them today that is available is biotin, which is an enzymatic cleanser that may be very helpful in helping these mouth sores stay clean. And for pain, topical um, magic mouthwash, which is a compound of uh, mycostatin and a small amount of viscous lidocaine may help provide some analgesic relief to these areas. Um, for patients who have not been treated with neupogen um, because they have not had severe infections to warrant this therapy, 
a short course of treatment with mupagen may be indicated to see if they can get a handle on the severity of their periodontal disease. Frequent reevaluations with their hematologist is necessary to see if they will continue to benefit from this therapy. Initially, we felt that avoiding all medication during the first trimester of pregnancy may be helpful. However, we have had several reviews and abstracts of women who have been enrolled in the severe chronic neutropenia registry and became pregnant. There was no increased incidence of birth defects seen in the infants born to these mothers. This has to be also balanced with the risk of infection causing uh, early miscarriage and not being able to carry the pregnancy to term. In terms of breastfeeding, we know that GCSF can be secreted through the colostrum or breast milk and passed on to the infant. There were studies performed in Florida, however, that showed that when GCSF was given orally to infants, that this did not raise their serum GCSF levels or have any other effect on these infants. So I believe it is safe to breastfeed while on Neupogen because maintaining the mother's health is also important to maintaining the infant's health. A very key point when we bring together different uh, patients with neutropenia is to remember that severe chronic neutropenia is not one disorder, but rather a heterogeneic group of disorders. They all have different severity, they have different outcomes, and they may require different treatments. Therefore, they should not be comparing themselves to each other or even to patients who have neutropenia from other causes such as chemotherapy or radiation. I believe we have a lot of advances made, but much research is needed. Um, and that remains hard because in reality, neutropenia is a relatively rare disorder. So I am hopeful about what we're going to see in the future.